African leaders have converged on Paris to attend African Finance Summit focused on reviewing African economies following shocks from COVID-19 pandemic and getting relief, especially from increased debt burden on countries. The summit, hosted by French President Emmanuel Macron, is drawing major stakeholders in the global finance institutions and some heads of government who will collectively discuss external funding and debt treatment for Africa and private sector reforms. For more on the summit, let's cross live now to Paris, where AP Paris Bureau Chief Angela Charlton joins us now. Good to have you. It's, could you give us a, uh, yeah, good to have you. Um, from what you're hearing so far, have you heard any breaking commitments on the side of, of Paris so far? Well, the meeting is just getting underway right now across town, um, and so there are no major commitments so far, but there was a big conference yesterday about Sudan, at which there was a lot of, uh, uh, there was aid offered as well as debt relief. And so I think the French government is hoping that that lays the, uh, kind of lays the groundwork for what's going to be announced today. Well, analysts say this, uh, the issue goes beyond financing. Uh, the more subtle issues like uh, governance reforms, ease of doing business, and more are far more important. Can you tell us if these were discussed during the summit? So, yes, the French government, that, and particularly President Emmanuel Macron, who's behind this whole issue, uh, they're trying to make it a twofold uh, conference. One part is about getting emergency funding for African countries as they emerge from the pandemic. The IMF is estimating that the whole continent could need as much as $400 billion in emergency funding. But the other piece of that is, is more deep and longer term reform of the private sector. Um, and one of the things they're, they're talking about is ways sort of different ways of financing. So to get out of the old sort of rich countries loan to, to poor countries in Africa paradigm and try different ways to get investment, for example, more directly into the hands of African entrepreneurs. So that's something that's coming up uh, at the talks later today. I'm not sure how much of that will result in concrete offers, but the EU, for example, is, is looking at a possible program that would focus on small businesses and particularly young entrepreneurs. Okay, and uh, Angela, from what you're hearing from the African side, what do you feel is the African angle? What are the African leaders hoping to get from France? It really depends on the country. I think, um, you know, France has its own interests in this. And, and one of the things that, that Macron has tried to do as president is notably reach out to and try to build economic relations with countries that have not been traditionally in France's sphere of influence in Africa. Um, so, you know, some so some African countries seem to be looking indeed for some of the emergency funding. Others are looking for longer term uh, investment and particularly longer term commitment so that it's not just uh, a one time deal. And in terms of security, uh, what is France hoping to offer the continent of Africa? Well, France currently has more than 5000 troops in the Sahel region uh, and Currently, is it remains committed to that despite despite increasing tensions around that and despite some some casualties on the French side. But for France, you know, certainly fighting extremism is extremely important. It's not clear that this this event today would result in concrete security commitments. But obviously, security is going to be part of any of these discussions. And one of the things that that Macron is notably pushing for is to get more European boots on the ground and get get more of a European commitment to to security in Africa. OK, and some might be asking why now and why France? Because um, some have also observed that when it comes to supporting Africa, um, China seems to have a bigger wallet. So is it for the optics? I mean, what what in terms of, uh, you say, reputation, what does Macron stand to gain by presenting himself as you, uh, a supporter of the African nations? There are a few things he could be he could be looking for here. One, just in general, the timing comes just as as France and Europe are are reopening and uh, reopening their economies in particular. They're vaccinating a lot, so I think they're they're starting to look beyond the pandemic and starting to look outside to the rest of the world again. It's been a, it's been a year where countries like France have been very inward looking, um, and so 
that that's one piece of it. As mentioned before, I think Macron could also, you know, would also definitely be interested in getting more of an economic footprint for France in countries outside the former French colonial region. And uh, and lastly, of course, we can't forget about the political context in France. Macron is uh, is looking ahead to presidential elections here next year. And um, this is a moment, again, as France is reopening, that he's looking to secure his international reputation and his international legacy. Uh, so France seems to be playing the catch-up game here when it comes to the African continent being the new bride everyone is going after. But talking about the local politics in France, Angela, how does this change or affect the dynamics of the local politics in France? It, it's an open question at this point. Uh, to be perfectly honest, Africa is not on the top of the agenda for, for the French uh, political sphere right now. Um, and it's, you know, while it's important for Macron's own international reputation, it is, it is an open question as to whether that will have any effect on voters. Uh, there's still a lot of focus right now on uh, domestic concerns and particularly domestic economic concerns here in France. And then, of course, there's there are all kinds of questions on the far right, uh, which will be a major player, I think, in next year's campaign about um, how to deal with the relationship with Africa. Okay, so um, the debt cancellation, as far as Sudan is concerned, is one substantial give. Uh, do you, are you aware of anything else that France has in the offing, um, apart from creating maybe an enabling uh, set of circumstances for African nations to thrive? At this point, I'm not aware of any concrete funding offers, but I think we will hear about them later today. Can you clarify for us uh, the difference between the African summit currently ongoing and one which has been postponed to October? Uh, that's sort of created uh, fake news, false news uh, spread uh, in the country here in Nigeria, as President Mohamed Buhari is also attending the summit in France. Uh, I think that there, there are a lot of issues going on around around the pandemic and around uh, security and political issues. Um, I, uh, you know, I think this one, Macron made a big point of really trying to focus it on financing and specifically post pandemic financing to try to keep it focused on on more current, short and, and medium term events for now, um, while while negotiations are still ongoing about about these larger larger issues. Okay, well, thank you very much, Angela, for giving us your feedback on that. We hope to hear more from you in the coming days.